All right, this next one is going to require me to bring up my light box. And for you guys, it'll be easy. You can go up here to your upper left and there should be a light box button. I've rearranged my interface a little bit. If you want to know how to do that, I've got a video in the description, a video link to this intro to ZBrush playlist. If you just do a control F and look for custom, you're going to see there's custom brushes. And then further down, there's video 42 is create your own custom interface and menus. So you can check this out and you can see how to customize your interface. However, uh, in order for me to bring up my light box, I need to hit the comma key, which you can do as well. And that'll bring up my light box. And then you're going to see if you go to the project tab, which should be the default, there is a pro projects folder in here. So if you double click this and then double click the ZPR that will load up that Z project. Um, incidentally, I don't know how useful this will be, but if you want, if you had like stuff that you were working on and you just wanted to add this to your current session, uh, instead of opening up a Z project through the light box, you can also go in here to load tools from project. Navigate to C program files max on ZBrush 2025 Z projects. This is the this is the folder that, that Lightbox is looking at. So if you find the pro projects in here, you can load a ZPR file just as a Z tool. Basically, that'll load that up as a separate Z tool. So uh, we have this project loaded in and this is probably going to be populated uh, by other professionals. This one's by Patrick 4 d You can check out his socials, Patrick Foley. Uh, you know, on Instagram, he has a lot of fun stuff to look at. So as they begin to populate that folder, you can go through here. You can alt tap on these to select different subtools, or you can go through here and select the subtools. And, you know, if they were using some sort of surface noise, you could go in here and look at that. Or if they're using some sort of micro poly or nano mesh, you could go and look at that. But this is just a way to see how other ZBrush professional artists work. Now, another cool thing is if you hit the B key on your keyboard, that'll bring up the brush menu. And you're going to see we have an IMM winter cookie. So in order to select this, you just hit I to narrow it down to all the brushes start with I. And then you'll see W will select the new winter cookies brush. So you can actually recreate the scene with these IMM uh, brushes that are here. So in fact, let's go, uh, let's alt tap the plate to select it or select it in your subtool stack. We'll go down here to delete other. And if we want to recreate the scene, uh, we can grab, you know, for example, this candy cane and then we drag it down on our canvas now it's kind of looks kind of cool it looks like a weird uh i don't know rec room for a dream black and white version uh, of this cookie however the reason it's doing that is because we have rgb turned on and that's telling zbrush hey we have white color selected so i have rgb turned on so i want you to draw out this imm brush with a white color that's not really what we want so we're going to turn off rgb in this case and then we're going to drag this out and you're going to see now the poly paint that is assigned to the original imm brush is now dragged out onto this canvas so right now the plate is masked and this cookie is unmasked so if i want to split these i can go in here to subtool split we can do split mass points or split unmasked points doesn't really matter and now our candy cane is its own our candy cane cookie is its own uh, subtool if you want to you can go in here and you can say rename you can rename it if you want. Uh, you can hit W, you can move it around, move scale and rotate. You can control drag out a copy. So you can go through here very quickly and start uh, being uh, very whimsical with your placement like this thing is this exploding Christmas cookies all over the place. And like I said, these are all just IMM brushes. So as long as you don't have any subdivision uh, surfaces in your file, you can go through here, you can select any one of these, you know, drag it out. And again, we have RGB turned off, so that'll inherit the poly paint. Uh, we can do split mass points. And I use my custom menu there. If you want to know how to make custom menus, that's that video right there. Make your own custom menus, assign hotkeys to them. So you can very quickly access commonly used things instead of going over here and scrolling all around. So now that this is split into its own subtool here, we can again just go through here and rotate this around, control drag this out. So feel free to use uh, this to your advantage. In fact, if we want to do like an explosion of chips, uh, one thing we can do is see we can append a sphere in here and we're going to take the sphere and we're going to scale it up and we're going to use this as a uh, nano mesh. So basically with this IMM brush selected, let's go in here to our brush options, hit create and say create nano mesh brush so when i do that that's going to give us a new brush so if i hit b on my keyboard now we have a z modeler brush with the letter with the number 10 next to it and that z modeler brush has all of these loaded in so what i can do is i can select this chocolate chunk you can also hit m as in michael pavlovich on your keyboard and you can go through and you can select imms through here if you don't want to kind of scroll through here so you can hit m grab that chocolate chunk imm and then when you hover over a face it's going to automatically be set to insert nano mesh uh, on an individual poly so if you hold down space bar we have it on a single poly let's do all polygons so if i turn on polyframe every single one of these polygon faces will be 
populated with a chocolate chunk uh, when I do that. So if you go through here, it's like, whoa, we got a bunch of chocolate chunks on a sphere. Let's go down here to nano mesh and we can say, we already know the sphere is controlling that. So let's say we're gonna turn off show placement. We don't need to see the sphere. Uh, I wanna randomize these things here. So let's do a little bit of width variance. Let's do a little bit of length variance, height variance. Uh, we can even do offset variance. Let's go ahead and crank this way up. You can go in here and say size, so you can make them different sizes. So again, like I said, we'll do a X offset, Y offset, Z offset. And now we're starting to get an explosion of chips, right? And we can also, you know, randomize the X, Y, and Z rotations, add some variance to that. So we're basically just getting a bunch of random chips in a spherical explosion. Uh, now, again, it looks pretty random, but it, we can also make it even more random by going down here to random distribution and just tapping that. And the more I drag this up, the more it's going to distribute more and more uh, of these chocolate chunks. Now, if I turn show placement back on, you're going to see these are just instances being drawn onto this sphere. So if I go in here with my move brush, uh, B, M, V for my move brush, as I move these around, you're gonna see those instances are gonna follow the underlying surface. So if I go through here and I scale the sphere down, you're gonna see these chocolate chunks follow along with it. And again, I can turn off show placement and uh, you, know, you can kind of see this in action. So you can go through here and you can explode, big old explosion of chocolate chunks here. Let's go down here to colorize. And we'll say choose mesh material and that'll give you that chocolate chunk color and there we go that's one way you can use nano mesh again you you have access to all of these if you want to make them bigger you can go in here to size again you can crank up the different variances here you can change the width the length the height on all of these things and make it as crazy as you want in fact you could even go in here to this sphere and duplicate it off and then scale that secondary sphere down drag it inwards and then go through here and we'll scale those down a little bit. So now we've got two spheres uh, worth of chocolate chunks in here. So you can kind of just duplicate this around, change the random distribution, make it more or less dense in here. So very quickly, you can get a pretty randomized explosion of chocolate chunks uh, if you're so inclined. Anyway, that's the, again, comma key for your light box, project, pro projects, as well as the new brush, B, I, IMM winter cookies and you can make your own uh, cookie explosion.